My dearly beloved in Christ, in today's gospel, we have the miracle of our Lord raising from the dead a young man that had died. And this is one of three stories, one of three uh, incidents of our Lord raising someone from the dead that is recorded in the gospel. And what is unique about this particular one is, number one, that no one asked our Lord to, to perform this miracle. And number two, it says that our Lord was moved with compassion. He was moved with pity, as he often was. And why? Because the woman whose son has, had died was a widow. And it is interesting that our Lord here gives us a good example of what we read so often in Scripture, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, of the importance of care for widows and orphans in particular, the most vulnerable classes of society. In fact, so often is the duty, the importance, the work of charity, of caring for widows mentioned in Scripture that it is considered one of the four sins that cry out to heaven for vengeance to oppress widows and orphans. At any rate, St. James says that true religion before God is this, to care for widows and orphans in their necessities and to keep oneself unspotted from this world. So you have all of these counsels throughout, again, both the Old and New Testament. And in fact, in the New Testament, St. Paul speaks about caring for widows who are widows indeed. And I wondered, what does he mean by those who are widows indeed? And so I looked it up. What do the fathers of the church say? And they say he is talking about widows who have no one, as distinct from widows who maybe have children who live close to them, who are now adults and can take care of them, etc. But a woman who is a widow indeed is one who not only lost her husband, but has no children, has no other family members, has no one. And that was the case with this widow in today's gospel. The Greek word, in our English translation, it says that the young man who died was her only son. But the word in Greek was only child. And so that brings on another dimension. She didn't have daughters at home. She lost her only son, but she lost her only child. So her husband was dead, no children, and the man was young. How young? We don't know, but I am guessing that he had not been married yet, maybe a teenager, maybe he was 16, 17, 18 years old. And here was all of her hopes for the future in this one child, now that her husband had passed away, and now he's dead. And it doesn't say this, but I believe our Lord timed his journey to this little town of Naim, so that he would arrive right as the funeral procession was going out of the town. Because, of course, our Lord knows everything. He knew the young man had died. He knew the woman had only this one child. He knew when the funeral was taking place. And so he arrived right at that moment and so dramatically raised the son to life, gave him back to his mother. We think to ourselves, what a sad state for this woman before that miracle was performed, after her son had died, being taken out to be buried in the cemetery outside the gates of the town. What a sad state did she have. But more than that would be parents whose children are dead spiritually. And although you cannot see that. God knows the state of the soul. That would be of greater concern for parents because parents place all of their hopes for the future in their children. And I'd like to quote a little bit from a wonderful book by Cardinal Menzenti on motherhood. And he talks about this and he begins by quoting what was said by the people at the birth of St. John the Baptist. So when St. John the Baptist was born, his father, Zachary, or I should say when he was prophesied that he would be born, that the father Zachary doubted because he was old and his wife was old. And as a punishment for his doubt, he was struck dumb. He could not speak. Well, when the child was born, they came to the father and gave him a writing tablet 
and asked him, what shall his name be? And the father wrote, his name shall be John. And right away, his tongue was loosed, as it says, and he began to speak and to praise God in the canticle, the Benedictus. And all the people wondered and were amazed and said, what, what type of child do you think this shall be? What type of child will it be? And of course, he went on to become the great St. John the Baptist. But that's the same question that parents ask themselves. They are given by God the blessing of a child. And they look down at that little infant in the cradle. And they think to themselves, what will become of this child? What will he be? What will he or she turn out to be later on in life? What will become of this child? So here's Cardinal Menzenti. A child may turn out to be an angel, but also a devil. Angel or devil, that is the question addressed to every human being in the cradle. And this expresses it correctly. For the angel and the devil wrestle with one another at the cradle of the child. Much that is noble in man must be raised up, and evil tendencies must be conquered before the good man comes to maturity. So an important point to reflect upon, the formation, the training, the discipline of children. Parents must remember what they went through when they were children, when they were teenagers, the struggles, the temptations. And they must not be too trusting in their children. Some parents are very pious and devout in their own living of the faith, but sadly are permissive when it comes to the raising of their children. And they fail to correct. They fail to discipline. And that is not only dereliction of duty, but a terrible act of uncharity towards that child. Because what children are raised to be, for the most part, that is what they will be as adults. Now, of course, we cannot forget about free will. Parents can raise their child perfectly well, and the child could go on and lose the faith and, and offend Almighty God through no fault of the parents because everyone has a free will. And we know that the world is corrupt and we all have to fight the good fight. But for the most part, it is true what the old saying says, that the apple does not fall far from the tree. And children will be in later life what they were formed to be by their parents from the time they were very young. So I think this is another lesson of today's gospel. This woman wept because her son had died. She was in terrible grief. And parents should feel the same way. And good Catholic parents do feel the same way. If they have a son or daughter who loses the faith or ceases to practice the faith. It reminds me what the wonderful pious mother of of King Louis IX of France said when he was a boy. You've heard it often. She said... Lewis, I would rather see you dead at my feet than to know that you committed a mortal sin. She had faith. She knew that the life of grace is so precious and that's what really matters. And so parents, do your children the favor of disciplining them and forming them and raising them properly from the time they are very young. And do not be too trusting It's interesting, I have a book by St. Alphonsus Liguori on different virtues. And when he's talking about the virtue of charity, he goes into the sins against charity of rash judgment, judging other people, etc. And then he says, what I'm saying here doesn't apply to parents. Because parents have to be skeptical or suspicious, I guess you might say, of their children, of their fallen human nature. In other words, don't be too trusting. Thinking, oh, my child, my son or daughter is a good boy, a good girl. I can trust him or her. They have a fallen human nature, and we must never forget that. Just as we all have that fallen human nature and have to fight, have to struggle to practice virtue. So this is another lesson in today's gospel. That that boy was only dead mortally. Far more terrible is spiritual death. Let us dread it. Let us dread it for ourselves, but also for our children and for parents to do everything you can to form them and train them right 
from their earliest years. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. 